Southern right whales are an indicator species for climate change and we're almost depleted to near extinction from commercial whaling. Fowler's Bay was a whaling station. They were hunted here and it took over 160 years for the whales to return. It was absolutely unbelievable. I felt like crying. The heaviest period of bay whaling, or shore-based whaling, in Australia and New Zealand was between about 1835 and 1845. They were interested in the baleen, and they were interested in the blubber. Because before the advent of petroleum and things, that's what they used for oil. The baleen was a, like a plastic, so they used them for um, umbrellas and corset stays. to make it worthwhile for them to stay and, and keep on killing whales. The numbers were certainly in the dozens, up to maybe just many as 100 whales in the bay at different times in the season. That's why they could afford to sit there for a whole season and wait for the whole population essentially to come into that particular location. By sitting in Fowler's Bay, what they did there was they managed pretty much to destroy the population in Fowler's Bay. So they were protected in 1935 internationally. It wasn't until about the late 70s or 1980 that we started to see them again on our shores here. Scientists were just scratching their heads thinking, what the heck's going on? So with the breakup of the USSR in 1991, USSR scientists were able to speak out and what they did was they said mm, there was illegal whaling by the USSR south of Australia and New Zealand and they were taking lots of species including southern right whales and this was in the 1960s. Southern right whales are listed endangered species and they are increasing at or near the biological maximum rate of increase at around 6 to 7 per cent. So we're now seeing around 2,500 whales in the Australian population, uh, which is a, a good news for the, the recovery of the species. Great for shore-based tourism, boat-based tourism at Fowler's Bay. Science and tourism haven't always seen eye to eye, but their relationship between me and Claire is it's good. We've been able to use photo identification and distributions and our future research. So next year we're starting a little bit more uh, behavioural and genetic studies on the whales as well and it's developing really, really good. Fowler's Bay between 1840 and 1843 was a whaling station. So back in those days they were hunted here and it took, you know, over 160 years for the whales to return. When we started, it was the whales passing through Fowler's, but there was nothing ever stayed. No one heard of a Fowler's Bay being about whales. It was you know, people traveling to Western Australia or, or New South Wales, Victoria. It was just a halfway point. Now people are traveling from all around Australia, at least a thousand kilometers, at least, just to come here to Fowler's Bay. So it's, it's pretty special. I felt like crying because it is such an emotional experience to see these incredible animals that come into this very private bay to look after their young. And as a mum and a woman that loves her kids and protection, you just go, this is a gift. It was beautiful. When we first bought this place, there was one pair, a mother and calf pair and two adults. And then you know, when we rolled the dice that day and decided to, to set up a whale watching business, from that season onwards, the whale numbers have just increased. So it's, it's good. It's good to see that the whales are starting to come back to a place where they were hunted. And now, again, they're not being hunted anymore, but they're being appreciated by a lot of people. Oh, I just love all animals and sea life. So 
when the opportunity to see the whales here, well, we couldn't say no to that. And they were just absolutely stunning. I'm quite attached to the whales and, you know, and the area, of course, but, you know, I wake up at sunrise every day or before sunrise. I'm down on the beach every day um, for a sunrise to watch the whales, count the whales, talk about whales on live, on my live posts that we do in the mornings. But I'm getting, I'm filming and you guys are getting filmed. We take people out watching whales in the boat and then same late afternoons, usually another time that I get down on the beaches and you know, really just to see how, the, you know, where they're sitting in the bay after the day of being out in a boat and, you know, just really trying to learn their behaviours as, as, as best I can. We now know that the primary carving grounds, such as the head of the Great Australian Bight, are filling up and on years of high abundance, the whales are actually choosing to select alternative carving habitat, such as Fowler's Bay, Encounter Bay, um, areas like Portland in Victoria or Geograph Bay in Western Australia are emerging as important, biologically important areas for carving, resting, mating whales. So um, it's really important to understand and to characterise the behaviours and the biology of the whales inside these small and emerging carving grounds so that we can protect them into the future and so that the whales continue to return to these important areas. Um, as the whale numbers increase, so do the interactions with humans and human activities. So uh, it's really important that we, we manage that so that humans and whale conservation can coexist into the future.